Hello, this is Joe McGee. Welcome to our podcast. Make sure that you subscribe and please share the podcast with your friends. That is the number one way you can help us reach people with God's love and healing. We love you guys. Hope you enjoy the podcast. Hey, everybody. It's Joe and Angel. Welcome to another Mailbag Monday where we take time and answer a lot of questions that people mail in to us. And we try to pick up ones we think were kind of across the board stuff. So we really try to do that. So we've got a load of questions, Angel. Let's just jump in some of them. What do you say? Thank you so much for watching. If you don't mind, just pressing a button and share this with your friends. Yes. And if you're watching on YouTube, please hit subscribe. That would help us out We're a lot. We're everywhere. You name it, we're on. <laughs> okay, Joe, I don't enjoy cooking that much. I'm just not your everyday Betty Crocker. <laughs> I feel bad for my husband because he loves a good home-cooked meal. I enjoy doing lots of other things, just not cooking. Mm. It's been bugging me for a while now that I haven't been giving him something he loves, and I need some help. How can I find joy in doing something I don't enjoy? <laughs> I'll let you answer that, Angel. <laughs> well, I actually wrote this question. <laughs> no, I didn't. <laughs> no, um, uh, you know, because we travel a lot, I don't enjoy cooking that much because when I'm home, I just want to regroup. But and and the challenge that is, Angel's a great cook. She's just a natural great cook. I've never had anything bad. She she made turnip greens the other day. Turnip greens. And I grew up in the South. I like turnip greens. She made the best turnip greens I have ever eaten in my life. She said she'd never made them before. I said, Dear Lord, that's the best turnip greens I have ever eaten. And so her daughter's on the phone and said, He lied. Said, no, no, she said No, this is what she said. My daughter is funny and she loves to tease me. And I she said, What are you doing today? And I said, Well, I made turnip greens. She goes, Mm, how did that go? And I said, Well, Joe says they're the best he's ever tasted. Absolutely and delicious. She said, Honey, he lied to you. And then she just starts laughing her head off and it was pretty funny. The point is Angel knows how to cook. We're just not home to cook much. So, uh, I knew one couple where they kind of went through this about three years. And he realized, I like to cook. I like to eat and I like to cook. So, he took over the kitchen. My father loved to cook. Mm-hmm. And my mom was a good cook. But he liked to cook a lot. Yeah. And so, he he did a lot of cooking in, in my home. But one of the things my daughter does with her husband, since they both work full time, yep. they do that uh, – what do you call it? Those box meals where yeah. you just – you they, they have everything like – it's, pre-planned, pre-measured, pre-fixed, and just turn on the stove. Yeah. So they really like that and yeah. enjoy that because it saves them from having to go to the grocery store, make a list. Think, yeah. You know. So they do that two or three times a week. And so then that's fairly easy. I, I grew up in the country. We, when we ate, we ate Italian. We bought a box of noodles. <laughs> we poured spaghetti sauce over it. That was our Italian meal. My no ki- meat. No, my kids will still say to this day, remember that year we all we did was eat spaghetti? And I'm like, it, that never happened. It may have felt like that happened, but uh. it never happened. And that drives me nuts. But one of the things I would say is don't stress out about it. Just say, let me do it once a week or maybe twice a week. And uh, Mama says truth sets you free. You just got to get blunt sometimes. You, I tell couples, you need to have about 30 minutes once a week. Out of seven twenty four days, just take one 30-minute period every week and just sit down and just talk to one another. Hey, Sugar, I'm just going to share a little bit. Here's some things, you know, that I don't like, things I do like. And, uh, you know, when I told you I like meatloaf, I, I didn't like it four nights in a row. I don't <laughs> like it. And I've had that happen. I had that happen. Not with I, me. I did not I do know that. my first wife. I told her, man, it's great meatloaf. And she cooked it four nights in a row. I said, one time I bragged on carrot cake. Well, she cooked four of them in a row. I said, honey, I don't like it that much. I like to have some apple pie. Now, let's change up. And so you just have your, when you start growing together as husbands and wives, you're going to have to be truthful. So, honey, you know, just say, sugar, I just don't like cooking. It's never been my deal. I don't like it. I stress out when I do it. Uh, it messes with me mentally. And I'm probably not going to be in a kissy face mood tonight if I have to cook. And another good rule to do is if I'm going to cook, then you can do the dishes. I think that yeah. is a fair, fair yeah. trade-off. Because once you've cooked, you're tired of doing it. Now, but now, like my mother. 
<laughs> when she cooked, she would hit every dish that felt like it was. I'm sure I'm exaggerating, yep. but every dish in the cupboards was dirty. Yep. So I hated doing the dishes after her. Of course, I was always getting that job. Well, but. and great people that like to cook, they're not. They don't want to eat when the dinner's ready because they've been eating the whole time. They've been cooking. And the people I've always known that oh, you're not eating. Well, I've been eating the whole time. I've been cooking, and so there's an advantage to cooking. So you can eat while you cook. And uh, but you're going to find out each other's strengths and weaknesses, and kind of go with the strength of each other. One thing that my father did that was brilliant was he told me he said, "Angel, you know, you never know what kind of marriage you're going to have and what kind of budget you're going to live on." Yep. So he would give me a budget. And I had to cook for a family of five. So one time he only gave me $10. 10 bucks, man. And Woo. then one time he gave me $20. And so, but it would be interesting. He said, see, this will prepare you so you'll know how to do it regardless of where you and your spouse are. That's a good Great life lesson. skill to learn. On my first marriage, I was a newlywed and I decided I was going to do a gourmet meal. <laughs> and I worked all day. I I took... I made stuffing from scratch. Whoa. And I, scratch stuffing. And I made Cornish game hens. Whoa. And I mean, Expensive I Expensive chicken. <laughs> I, had, I had dessert and everything. And he came home and he said, took a bite. And I'm anticipating lots of praise at this point. <laughs> and I, and this is what he said. <laughs> and, could you pass me the salt? <laughs> yeah. I'm I didn't a, cook again for ten years, yeah. I, and I, that's a that's a true story. That was a true story. Woo. So, uh, you know, yeah, you want it before you know that gets too deep because that can be a t- tender subject. But yeah, because you're going to eat every day the rest of your life. Mm-hmm. You're going to sleep every day the rest of your life. Things you're going to do the rest of your life going to have to put some time into. It's not going to go away. <laughs> we were just at a church, and the the pastor's wife was telling us that her husband was raised real poor, and her mother. His mother would take hamburger and spread it thin on a bun and just stick it. In a, it wouldn't be like a round thing of hamburger. It would be just a thin spread on top of the <laughs> – yeah, and I was of, like – A lot of fat and every now and chunk of beef somewhere. Yeah, he said it was good. He liked it. But I, I, I was like, well, I got to be honest. I've not heard that one before. Nope, that's a new one. So, uh, yeah, everybody, everybody – uh I came from a family that loved to cook. I'm from the South in Georgia. They all were good, good cooks. And uh, so. Bottom line, truth will set you free. Yeah. It's not going to go away. Yeah. And you I don't think you're going to just wake up one day with a great love for cooking. <laughs> it's probably not going to happen. If it does, maybe that's good. Yeah, but, or maybe you can say, hey, like one night, let's do a meal together. Yeah. You do this and I'll do that. A lot of couples really enjoy yeah. cooking together. Yeah. We should try that, Joe. End up kissing more than cooking. Well, if that's true, I'd like to try it. <laughs> yes, ma'am. I feel something coming on here tonight. Be really good. All right, Joe. Let's see what we got here. Why, just jump in, sir. Just jump why in. Why do women feel they just have to give driving tips? Oh, it ain't only women that do this. <laughs> Joe is notorious at this. Joe, This is Joe in the car when I'm driving. I can't look. I can't look. Sugar, I love you, but I'm not going to drive with you. So this is, whoever wrote this, that is not true. Ah. Seriously, she refuses to drive if we're both in the car, but she has to keep reminding me about using my blinker. Yeah, that that does irritate me, too, if a blinker gets stuck on. Or has to tell me to be careful because the car that is 12 blocks ahead is going to want to merge. And on and on. The car merging onto the highway is not my problem. The guy merging is the one that has the problem. <laughs> Uh, That's funny. Uh, again, you are two different people from two different planets when you got married, and uh, driving will expose that quicker than anything. And so, uh, uh, Angel and I, we've been married. We're three, we're three year veterans, and uh, uh, in town, we've learned I don't drive in town. I don't uh, on the interstate. But today, highway. but today he did, and he was right behind me. I pull up to get in the turning lane to go left. He pulls up right beside me, but doesn't pull up. Like, I think I'm going to wave at him. I'll roll down the window and say something. He he stops back here, so I can't <laughs> say anything. And I'm like, surely he knows this is me up here. Did you know it was me up there? No, ma'am, I did not. I we did pulled not. out of the driveway at the same time. I know. We turned down that road the same yes, time. Yes, we did. 
Surely you recognize my car. I didn't. I was oblivious. I'm thinking about where I'm going. I know I have to go 8.2 miles and turn left to get to where I was going this morning. And I'm thinking about where I'm going. I wasn't thinking about who is beside me. I was oblivious. Before God, I was oblivious. And that's why I drive in town. <laughs> that's right. And that's why now we have two cars. We had one car for a couple of years. Yes, we did. And thank God. But, but, so we, got, we really haven't addressed the problem. Um who cannot, uh, well, I will go with me. I've learned just to look out the window sideways Mm-mm. and not look at it. No, he hadn't learned that. He's well, working Well, I'm on learning it. to look out the window <laughs> and to not say anything. Now, my hands will jerk every now and then because I'm afraid the wind coming. Every time we come. To- my hands will come up, you know, because uh, Angel's like a NASCAR driver. And he, she's, nyeh, nyeh, nyeh. me, I'm real slow. I'm like Grandma Moses grandmother <laughs> i'm not in a hurry when i'm going somewhere he drives like my son i'm gonna get in that chicka right poker, lane poker. slow lane i'm gonna stay right there so there's room over here I'm not, I'm not in any hurry i'm no hurry so we come from two different worlds neither one's right or wrong it's just very different so we're having to learn how to adjust to one another so the best thing is again truth will set you free so honey your driving just makes me nervous as i'll get out you know so can you just slow it down a little bit uh the blinker, honey, you're going to have to turn your blinker on. So say, honey, if that blinker's not on, I'm going to tell you because it's the law. It's in the driver's handbook. You can get a ticket for not turning your blinker on. Plus, if it's an accident, it's your fault if your blinker's not on. So if I'm in the car, I'm protecting me as well as you. Sugar, do you mind turning your blinker on? Honey, can you turn your blinker on? Well, let's say, but the Bible does say even the fool looks wise when he can control his tongue. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure who that's for. <laughs> I'm telling you, I was a claims adjuster for the 12 years that I was uh, uh, divorced. And uh, my driving is a lot more conservative than it was at one point. I just want you to understand that. I just a very good driver. Very good. It's just we don't drive the same. something weird hanging off there. It's It's bank pen. (laughs) Thank you, sugar. No, it's not. It's something. (laughs) But I don't know what it is. See, we amend and repair. That's what marriages do. We amend and repair. Especially when you're driving. Again. Uh, you can't sit there and, and develop hemorrhoids. You can't do that. Just, just speak slow, speak soft. And sugar. Before, I've never had the fear of developing hemorrhoids we while pull I was out, driving. I just want to remind you, <laughs> we're not in any hurry, and uh, it'll be fine. <laughs> Somebody just opened the door and gave a look because I think the same thing. I don't know where that line came from. <laughs> I hope that answers the question. Well, that was more information than we all needed. Uh, is it wrong, Joe, to say you're sorry in a situation that you're trying to de-escalate? Sometimes I know that I haven't done anything wrong, but I feel like the only way this is going to stop if I say sorry first. But I'm beginning to resent that I always have to do it. I think a lot of couples have that problem. Yeah, we, a lot of us do. Uh, you can say it this way, but it won't fix it. You can say, I'm so sorry you're upset. No, no, that that's not the right answer. That's a bad answer. <laughs> but that would be the one I would give. It's like the, I, my son when he was little. I say, "Hey, say, say, Sumner, come here." He'd say, "Hold on, just a minute." I said, "Son, you don't tell women to hold on just a minute." <laughs> and so he's learned. He doesn't say "hold on just a minute" anymore. But uh, yeah, that's probably not the best answer right there. No. So would you like to give a the perfect answer for this? Yeah, I mean, I don't think there's anything wrong with saying I'm sorry, even when you don't feel it. But I do think it's wrong if it's making you resentful. But I think, um, man, if I'm going to err, I'd rather err saying I'm sorry. Uh, but you, you, Well, if you're saying I'm sorry for the 52nd time in the same 24-hour period, Houston, we have a problem. You're going to have to address the situation. Just keep it. The biggest thing is, <laughs> and I'll say it again, speak slow, speak soft. Honey, you know, evidently we got a problem here that's not going to go away. Uh, I, I'm sorry, I just don't see what it is. The problem is I'm going to try to do whatever you're asking me to do, try to do it as friendly and as quickly as I can. But something evidently is not connecting here because evidently I'm not seeing this. And as I've had those conversations, honey, uh, I'm not a perfect. We got married. We said this. Sugar, I'm not a perfect person. I'm going to make some mistakes, not on purpose, but I'm. Probably, we are two different people come from two different worlds. That have fallen in love, going to get married, but eventually, somewhere in our conversation, somewhere in our daily life, we're going to come at a crossroads. But I promise you, I'm not doing anything on purpose to anger you or make you upset. 
I'm just going to do something I don't think like you think, and we'll have to start blending together. So when I say I'm sorry, sure, I'm sorry you're upset. We'll see if we can make some adjustments here. I didn't think that would upset you. I didn't see that problem. Well, I can't believe you didn't see that. You can't say that. That's that's wrong because only God knows what I'm thinking inside. You can't jump in somebody else. Well, I know what you're thinking. No, you don't. No, my heart's right. I, every day I did something that upset you, and I'm sorry it did. But I'm going to try to change that. So I'm trying to say, I'll say it again, amend and repair. I'm sorry that upset you. I don't want that to, we will try to avoid that if we can. Do it a different way. You know, I don't want to. And sometimes I think you have to step back and say, let's give this a few minutes. Yep. Oh, that's let's perfect. Re- let's regroup. That's perfect. And then we can come and address it again. Because sometimes, you know, I personally have to get quiet and just be by myself for a minute. And then I have and that's, to think. And that, that's what this means. You choke. All right, sure, I'll be in my office. <laughs> I just, it works good for us. It really does. We're not trying to be funny. I understand. I understand. Yeah, I got I to gotta reprogram. Pro- I got to process it for myself. And Angel is a really good at recovering. And so I realize, what is it? She said, we'll coop time, and I'm going to get some stuff done. And, uh, and she's never, never stayed mad about anything, ever. You know, it's like, you're making it up. No, I'm not. And we don't agree on everything. We really got two different opinions about a lot of stuff. We really do. But we love each other. So what are you doing? We're working on it every day. That's what a marriage is. That's what a friendship is. Yes. You have to work on it. Yes. You can't You can't make a withdrawal on a relationship without making an investment first. Because I don't care who you married, they're going to change. Nobody stays the same. They're going to grow. They're going to develop different opinions, different actions, different desires. It's going to change. And their life experience is going to be different. Yes. Yes, it is. So with that being said, uh, try to take a different approach because we don't want you to get bitter about it. No. That's not, it's not worth becoming resentful and bitter. Because that is a dead end road. Hey, guys, uh, I want to mention our, our website because we have great resources oh, man. there. Uh, eight things no kids should leave Ooh. home without. You don't find a great marriage. That's a gold mine. You build one. That's a gold mine. Uh, I love this one. God knows how to raise your kids. Yes, even he if does. You don't. There's <laughs> yes. several books. These are just the books. Uh, we also have mini series of you speaking. Yes. And uh, just lots of other cool resources. Check us out at joemcgee.com. It'll bless you. And don't forget Wednesday with Joe and Josh and Friday, the Heroes of the Bible. And uh, hey, if you got a question for us, take a second and. Write it down and send it to mail at com. We'd love to hear what kind of questions you have. Yes, we'd love it. And we'll yeah. try to answer it. We do. Yes, we will. God bless you guys. Have a great day. Thank you. Be sure to join us Monday, Wednesday, and Friday to hear more of what God can do in your life. it has got a great future for you and your family. We're here to help you get there. Please make sure you visit Joe McGee Ministries on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. There you find all of our Friday funny videos and other encouraging resources for you and your family. While you're at it, be sure to visit JoeMcGee.com. We have all sorts of materials, books, DVDs, you name it, all there to help you, your marriage, and your family succeed.